On June 17, China sent three astronauts to the Tianhe core module of the Chinese space station with the launch of the Shenzhou 12 spacecraft. The core capsule was launched into Earth orbit on April 29. The development of the space station has been widely reported in the Chinese official media as a marker of the country's economic, technological, and overall national power. China's state news agency, Xinhua, reported that the three astronauts on the Chinese space station would set up the first Communist Party branch in outer space. According to the Communist Party's constitution, a party branch should be set up when there are more than three party members. It also adds, In 1927, we built the party branch on a company of 80 to 150 people. In 2021, we will build the party branch in the sky. Official Chinese media have provided the world with video footage of three astronauts living and working on the space station with the core module, where they will be stationed for three months. It is China's first crewed space mission in nearly five years and will be the longest to date. They will live on the space station near Earth orbit, where they will experience 16 sunrises a day. Unlike the ISS astronauts who use Greenwich Mean Time, the Chinese astronauts will work on Beijing time. The Tianhe core module on the Tiangong space station has three bedrooms and a bathroom equipped with a microwave oven, refrigerator, water dispenser, folding table, and other furniture. It provides more than 120 kinds of food. Astronauts can also use the space station's treadmill and bikes for daily exercise. The release of these videos has sparked widespread interest among the Chinese public and has also received tremendous attention overseas. China's newly commissioned space station is currently the only space station other than the International Space Station. The International Space Station ISS, launched in 1998 and is a partnership between the United States, Canada, Japan, Russia and member nations of the European Space Agency. It has hosted more than 200 astronauts and researchers from 19 countries for space research. China has been barred from taking part in the ISS since 2011, when the US passed a law banning space cooperation between NASA and Chinese organizations due to national security concerns. The ISS is expected to retire in 2024. According to the US media, if the US and its partners do not extend the life of the ISS, then China's Tiangong will be the only human crewed space station in Earth orbit after 2024. The Chinese space station is much smaller than the ISS, but China hopes it will operate for a decade or more. China's chairman, Xi Jinping, has compared it to the two bombs and one star of the Mao era when China successfully tested the first atomic bomb, the first hydrogen bomb, and launched the first artificial satellite. China also plans to launch the Wentian experiment module and the Mengtian experiment module in the next two years to expand the space station further. In addition, there will be four cargo and four manned spacecraft launches. The space station is scheduled to be completed in orbit by 2022 with experimental capabilities and will move into the application and development phase. China is a late starter in space exploration, but it has developed rapidly. In 2003, it sent its first astronaut into orbit, becoming the third country to achieve manned spaceflight on its own. The collapse of the Soviet Union means one less competitor for the US and China in space. Now the US dominance is being challenged by China. China's Chang'e 4 probe successfully landed on the moon's von Karman crater in early 2019. This is the first landing of a human probe on the back of the moon. In June 2020, China launched the 55th Beidou Navigation Satellite, completing the Beidou 3 Global Satellite Navigation Network ahead of schedule. Its completion has made China a competitor to the US global positioning system. In May, China's Tianwen-1 rover landed on Mars. 
China became the first country outside the US to send a rover to Mars, placing it among the world's leaders in planetary exploration. Brian Whedon, Director of Program Planning at the Secure World Foundation, said that while the commissioning of China's space station is an important achievement, it does not mean that China is on par with, let alone surpassing, the U.S. in the space arena. But more U.S. officials and experts expressed concern. In May of this year, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson warned the U.S. Congress during a hearing on U.S.-funded manned lunar landings. He said that the U.S. cannot afford to be complacent about China's space development. On June 19, Brandon J. Weichert, a U.S. space and security expert, said in a media interview, to fight and win a space war against the Americans, the first thing that the Chinese regime will do is to knock out or blind our satellites in a space Pearl Harbor type event. We are not yet prepared to defend ourselves, let alone retaliate in the way that would deter China or Russia from trying this during a geopolitical crisis. In China, the agency in charge of the manned space program, the China Manned Space Engineering Office, or CMSEO, isn't a civilian agency like NASA. CMSEO is subordinate to China's Central Military Commission, CMC, an agency of the Chinese Communist Party that oversees the Chinese military. On June 17, the three astronauts that were sent to the space station are all Air Force pilots of the People's Liberation Army, underscoring how the Chinese manned space program is inseparable from the Chinese military. Weichert pointed to two Chinese space technologies that could cripple U.S. satellites. First, he said a giant robotic arm, 10 meters in length, which, according to Chinese state-run media, can lift objects weighing up to 20 tons. The arm is attached to the Chinese space station and poses a serious threat. Wai Chert said, So China, in peacetime, could use that grappling arm to help ships dock, but in wartime, they could use that to pluck our satellites from nearby orbits and push them out of orbit or sabotage them. In April, Army General James Dickinson, commander of the U.S. Space Command, told a Senate hearing that China's robotic arm technology in space could be used in a future system for grappling other satellites. Weichert said the second Chinese technology that poses a threat to U.S. satellites is lasers. China planners have talked about installing a large laser when their space station is completed. Now, they say in peacetime, the laser would be used to clear orbital debris. But in wartime, that laser could potentially be used to blind sensitive American satellites in orbit. International agreements and understandings on the security of space assets have not yielded a universally recognized body of law, nor is there any provision in international law that would prevent the deployment and use of laser weapons or other anti-satellite weapons in space. The United States, and indeed all nations of the world, rely heavily on space assets. Satellites are essential for GPS positioning, communications, data transmission, precision munitions guidance, and surveillance and reconnaissance, to name a few. Satellite communication is critical not only for Washington to effectively deploy its forces, but it's also vital for the U.S. economy. Weichert said the United States would see its economy sent back to the pre-1970s era without satellites, given that most modern electronic transactions, such as exchange-traded funds, ETFs, rely on them. Weichert pointed out, they're still behind us, but rather than being 18 years behind us, 20 years behind us, they're only about 6 or 7 years behind us now. Weichert believes that U.S. policymakers need to come up with a better space strategy, at the end of last year, the U.S. Space Force was officially established. Despite the dissenting voices, then-President Trump favored a separate Space Force and the relaunch of U.S. manned spacecraft. According to many in the media, the competition in the space arena is a demonstration of the rivalry between the U.S. and China. But in fact, it is more than that. The CCP has the national resources to support China's space program fully. Space achievements are used as a major barometer of the Communist Party's legitimacy both internationally and domestically. It is used to demonstrate the superiority of its political system and ideology. 
When the CCP stated its intention to spread communist thinking to space, it served as a stark contrast to the first manned mission to orbit the moon in 1968, when three American astronauts read the Bible's book of Genesis together on Apollo 8. A quarter of the world's population witnessed and felt the power of faith by watching it live or in a pre-recorded broadcast. Thus, what is happening in space above the Earth is not just a competition between nations. It could very well be a war.